In this video, we're gonna be going over the Sandbox for Zoho CRM. So Sandbox, of course, is where you can make changes to the configuration of the app without actually affecting any of the day-to-day -day users. Then when you're ready, you can deploy those changes into production. Uh, so before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below because that really does help us out. And if you're looking for some assistance on your Zoho install, just head over to zanata.com and click on that big old book a meeting button. We'd love to meet up and chat. So without any further ado, let's jump right on into the walkthrough. So here inside of the CRM, what we're gonna do is go to setup, and then down here under data administration, we will go under sandbox. Now a sandbox, like it says here, is essentially an environment where we can make changes without affecting what the system will call production. Production just means the real application where all the people are working, where all the real data lives. We just wanna make some changes outside of that environment. So first thing we'll do is create a new sandbox. We'll give this a name. Let's call it our example sandbox. Always a good idea here to include a description of like what you're doing in this sandbox. It's actually pretty common that you might have one or two running at a time. So just good to know exactly what's going on within each. Now, when we create a sandbox, we can choose if we just want configuration, which is like the settings, the fields, the automations, or if we wanna pull in a subset of data. Now, one thing that's important to note, I'll just get this out of the way now, in Sandbox, if we ever have like a um, email notification or an automated, really any type of communication, it will not go out. You do have to be careful if you're writing custom code. Sometimes if you're writing like a deluge function, you may be able to trick the system into sending it. But as a general rule of thumb, you should be pretty safe in terms of doing any email automation and, and things like that. Now we can choose if we want it to be sample data or production data, which would be just like a subset of what's actually in the system. Um, that can be nice if you're running some more complicated routines in Sandbox. I'm just going to pull in the sample data for now. Then we can choose which users should be able to access this. Normally, we're going to start with like an admin or development user, and then maybe add a couple key day-to-day -day users to test things out before we actually push them live. I'll go ahead and create this Sandbox instance. This is just gonna run in the background for a moment, generally takes a minute or two, so we'll be right back when this is completed. All right, so with that sandbox created, we are ready to continue. A few things that I'll show you here on this sandbox page before we jump in. If you ever need to add more people to the sandbox, we can click on edit, and that will actually pop back up that accessible to setting and we can choose from there. Another important thing too, we're not able to do it right now because we just created it, but a rebuild when you have the ability to do it is essentially setting that sandbox back to exactly what is in production. So you wanna be really careful with that. Don't do that in the middle of building a sandbox. I generally don't really recommend doing it in general. Just make a new sandbox when you are ready to pull back from production. When we click in, we'll see everything that's been done in the sandbox. So this will get more useful in a moment once we make some changes inside of the sandbox environment. So to do that, we'll actually just click on go to sandbox in the top right. One important thing up here, this little yellow tag will always be there when you are in the sandbox. Um, just as a visual reminder that you're not working with real data in the system. So let's say that we want to make just like a basic change to our system. Let's say inside of the contacts record, we want to add some type of date and then send an email on that date. So what we'll do, we'll just jump into our settings. We'll go to contacts. I am going to go kind of quickly as I add some of this data just to make it uh, a little quicker for you guys because you all know primarily how to do this. Let's call this like their anniversary date. We'll save and close. Now we'll go into our workflow rules. For contacts. and we'll set up a workflow. Let's say we want to do this on a date. We'll do this on that anniversary date and then recur every year. And we'll add an email notification. Now I'm going through these steps so I can actually show you kind of what each of these looks like when we go to push them live. So we'll create our email notification to the contact. We'll select a template. 
Now I'm going to create one real quick. Again, just so I can show you as many things as possible as they deploy. We'll just give this some very basic content. And then we'll click Save. Now again, these are just very, very basic example templates. Of course, the work you're going to do in here is going to be a little bit more significant. But I'll just go ahead and add those here and then click Save and Associate. And now I've created that workflow. Now let's say just to be safe, maybe like one day later, we want to give them a call. So we'll create a task. And that'll just be assigned to that contact owner. Pretty minor changes. Essentially what we've done is add a date and then set up a workflow on that date to both send an email as well as schedule a task the day later for a quick engagement from our team. So now what does it look like when we actually go to deploy these to production? Uh, we'll give it a refresh here. And it will essentially now break down all of those changes that we made into various sections that will allow us to see easily all the breadth of differences that have occurred inside of the system. Now I could just go here, select all and click deploy changes to production. That's basically gonna motor through every single one of these and push it live. It does a pretty good job in going in what you would call like the right order, right? So like before we could ever add this workflow, for example, this anniversary date field would need to exist. So normally it'll do a good job if we select all. Occasionally, if you're writing a script and it has connections in it, you might need to recreate those inside of production separately. Now, before I push it live, I do want to show you what will happen if there is a conflict. So I am going to go over to the contacts inside of production and just quickly add that anniversary date field here as well, right? And the system is not going to like that right? Because I now have a duplicate field inside of both systems. Um, so it should identify that as a conflict. I just set that up so I can show you how we'll go about resolving those and what they look like when they occur. So if I click deploy changes to production, what we'll see is that four of these are qualified. So things like the email template, totally fine. The task is totally fine. The email notification. But what it's found is that there are two conflicts. So one, the anniversary date field already exists inside of production. And two, because this workflow is connected to the sandbox version of that field, it's not going to let us deploy it. So we are going to need to resolve this issue. Now, in this particular case, there are two ways to resolve it. I could either rename one of these fields or what I would recommend doing in this case in particular is I'm just going to remove the one that's inside of the standard layout. Now, this is where you're going to have to use your judgment, right? I know that I can remove this one from the standard layout because I just added it and I know there really isn't any data in there or anything that relevant that I'm going to need. So I'm in the clear to remove it. If you're kind of in the middle of a build and maybe you're working with a field that already has a bunch of data in it, it very well might be worth just recreating the sandbox and redoing that workflow there rather than trying to migrate all the data to the new field. That, at the end of the day, is going to come down to a personal preference. But now that I've actually removed those unnecessary fields, or the duplicate fields, I should say, I can go ahead and proceed to push these changes live. This is going to take a variable amount of time based on how much stuff you've built in CRM. If you've done a lot of changes, it'll take a little longer. In our case, it shouldn't take too long because there aren't many changes that have been made. So we'll be right back in just a moment once that is completed. All right, so here we are. Deployment has been completed and all of those changes have been pushed into production. So now we're actually at the point again where these two systems are in sync. There really aren't any changes or differences between the production account and the Sandbox account. I will highlight a really good habit is if you're using the Sandbox, try to use it for every change. Even if it's a really, really minor thing, like you just want to add one field, but you're already in the middle of a Sandbox build with some more complicated development, add the field in Sandbox and deploy it just to be safe and ensure that if you determine in your Sandbox build that you do need to interact with that field, everything is going to push over properly into the production system. One thing I'll show you here is under deployment logs, we can see everything that's been changed or pushed into production. 
When I actually move functionality from sandbox into production, that's called a deployment. And so all of those are going to be shown here. So we can see line by line everything that's gone from Sandbox into the real account. Again, this is kind of a nice way to keep track of all of these things. Any type of change or process or really any adjustment to the system will all show up here. So if you're in the habit of using Sandbox, you actually kind of have a better audit trail of what uh, development activities have gone on inside of the CRM. Now, last thing to show is just to confirm if we jump on into an example contact here, we'll see that they do in fact have that anniversary date field. So we're looking good. If I go into my setup and into workflow rules and filter this down for contacts, we'll see that my workflow rule is here. It's based on the appropriate date and it's got its email notification and task automation set up just like we had in the sandbox. So there are, just before we wrap, a small handful of features that are not supported in sandbox. What you'll see is that occasionally when a new feature comes out, it might take a month or two before we can use it inside of sandbox. That's something Zoho is getting quicker and quicker on. The other elements that are not really going to connect are like marketplace plugins, Zoho integrations. So like, let's say we have CRM and campaigns. You're only going to be able to integrate that to the production account, not the sandbox in, in the vast majority of cases, unless you're building a custom. And then lastly, the mail merge templates, just because these are technically writer, not CRM. They do not, unfortunately, integrate into the sandbox environment. Again, there are actually some ways around that, just not using the default mail merge tool that's included with Zoho. With that, I think we've wrapped up what we need to here for the sandbox. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. If this sparks any feedback, questions, or additional video requests, leave those in the comment section below as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.